exam itself. Um, so you saw the uh, formula for our standard uh, cost analysis, and uh, those are obviously relevant to Chapter 10. I'm thinking that uh, we're going to have 30 questions, three chapters. I'm probably going to do something like, what, 8 for Chapter 8. It's probably something like 8 for Chapter 13 with the balance being uh, for uh, this chapter, something like that. Or maybe, what, 10, 10, and 10 would be equal, wouldn't it? Okay. So, uh, what? Not a big fan of Chapter 8? Okay, well. Eight, ten, and twelve. You want to do chapter twelve now? Eight, ten, and twelve. No, I'm not doing twelve for chapter thirteen because I don't have enough. I don't have enough questions, so that's not happening. Um, we might do uh, eight. It's going to be, if anything, it's going to be chapter ten centric. So plan for chapter ten more than anything. Okay. So anyway, but, you know, probably even distributed with maybe a little bit of a emphasis on Chapter 10. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look at this one. And um, we have these uh, wall hangings, whatever. And it takes two hours of direct labor to produce a single wall hanging. And I'm kind of not following my own advice. What do I always say for these problems? Figure out what they're asking you first, which is what? the labor efficiency variance. So since they're asking me labor efficiency, I'm going to close this because I don't know about you, but there's a nasty little wind that's whipping through with this door open. Okay, so what's happening? We're um, taking a look here and we have this uh, labor efficiency variance. Labor efficiency variance is going to be what? Standard rate and it's going to be my standard hours minus my actual hours, right? Okay. So I start looking at this, and they tell me that my standard rate per hour is what? $12. So I pick up that $12. That's easy enough. And then they tell me that what? The actual hours, we produced 10,000 units, and we used how many hours? 21,000. 40 hours, and then we have to figure out what was the standard hours. Well, if they produced, what, 10,000 units, and they are supposed to use how many hours per unit? Two hours per, so I do the two hours. So that means they should have used, what, 20,000 labor hours to produce uh, to, for their overhead is their allocation base to uh, produce those 10,000 units. So we've got $12 times, a, what is that, a negative 1040? Okay. And so since it's negative, it is a negative, uh, what's that, uh, minus 12,480. So that's unfavorable because it's negative. Okay. Now, Notice, guys, I take that approach where the last number I do is the number that I have to kind of pull that calculation out on. Everything else was just sort of given, and I pulled the numbers out of there. The reason I do that last, I mean, I kind of joke around with this ninja approach and all that, but what I find is when I do that, if I do that calculation and I get a weird number inside the parentheses, I immediately know I messed something up and I stop right there and I don't have to go through the emotional upheaval of trying to get one of the answers and not seeing it's there. I know that I'm not going to get the right answer because I made a mistake on that calculation. So before I start looking for what I'm hoping the right answer is, I've already gone back and corrected my error, haven't I? Okay, so that's why you want to do that because, you know, there's a certain amount of emotion that goes into taking a test like this and you start suffering right away when you can't find one of the choices and then you start floundering. Okay, so always do the one where you have to pull that calculation last. 
you, you know, it's going to do it one more time on me. You can't just let it go. It's got to say one more time. I got to do this to you. <clears throat> okay. All right. So let's go ahead then and let's take a look at this one for the controller uh, of Durham Skates. Oops. Durham Skates here. Okay. And um, they're looking here and uh, they want what? The quantity variance, don't they? Okay. So if they want the materials quantity variance, that's going to be what? That's going to be my standard price times my what? Times my actual quantity, uh, standard quantity, standard quantity what? Standard quantity purchased or used? Standard quantity used minus the actual quantity, right? Okay. And so the standard price here, they tell me, is what? $12. They are going to probably give me what? The actual quantity, which was what? 4,900 units. Okay. This is the actual quantity was that was used is 4,900. Did I say standard quantity? Actual quantity used is 4,900. Well, standard goes first. Actual production using 4,900 units of direct material purchased for the month. So they use 4,900. They use what they purchased. 4,900 was actual quantity used. I don't understand what you're saying I'm doing wrong. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Actual quantity what? Used, not standard used. Thank you. Well, I'm not complaining. I said thank you. Okay, so we got what? Standard quantity minus what? Actual quantity used. Okay, and then what? The what? The budgeted amount was how many units of material? 5,000. Now, this one, I didn't have to do sort of that last calculation. They just gave me what they were supposed to use, what the budgeted was, didn't they? Okay, so now I sit here and I've got this 12 times what? Times 100. And so that's what? A positive 1,200. And so that is favorable, right? Okay. Okay, good. Let's take a look at number three now. And um, the company had budgeted sales for January and February of 20,000 and 25,000 units. And they want the budgeted cost for what? Purchases in January. So I'm going to have to start out with what? And it's important that you know what the word respectively means. That means that what? This amount relates to January and this amount relates to what? February. Okay, and so we're sitting here, and if they're asking me January, I know I have to produce what? 20,000 units, don't I? If I want to sell 20,000, I need to produce 20,000, right? Then they say that they want to have 10%. Is it 10% in this one? Yeah. They want 10% of the next month's sales available at the beginning of this month, right? Okay, or at the, excuse me, at the end of this month. So I have the desired 
ending inventory. The desired ending inventory is 25,000 times what? Times 10% of what uh, that's going to be for the next month. So that's 2,500. So that gives me now a total needs. Total needs of what? 22,500. Okay, but they would have started January with 10% of what they need for January, wouldn't have they? So if I was going to produce 20,000 in January, I would have started January with 10% of that or what? 2,000. So I subtract the 2,000 from that. And that gives me 20,500 now. Okay, 20,500, and then it's uh, what? $3 per unit is my purchase price. So if I multiply that by $3, what do I get this? Uh, 61,500. Right? Look, guys, don't make more out of this than, than it is. If you need 20,000 units, then you better have 20,000 units, right? If you want to sell 20,000, you better have 20,000. So you put that number down, right? They tell me they don't want to just sell 20,000 and end up with zero. They want some left at the end, don't they? 10% of the next month. So I better have those too, right? So I add that to the number that I want to sell. But hey, I always give myself a head start of what I'm going to need for that month, don't I? I always give myself a head start of what I'm going to need for that month, right? Right? So if I was going to produce 20,000 units in January, then I guess I needed 2,000, right? To start January. So I don't have to reproduce those. They were already sitting there at the beginning of January, weren't they? So I subtract off the beginning inventory. How many units were they going to produce? 20,000. Do you need 20,000? Everybody. Do you understand why we have the 20,000? Everybody. Everybody. Yes. Okay, good. You understand why we need the 20,000. Do you understand that they don't want to finish the month with zero? They don't want to finish the month with zero. They want 10% of what they're going to need to start the next month, aren't they? What are they going to have in the next month? 25,000. They want 10% of that. 10% of 25,000 2,500. So I better have a little extra left over, right? So I really need 22,500, but I start each month with 10% of what I need for that month, don't I? So since I needed 20,000 in January, I started with 2,000. So I subtract that off. I don't need to produce them. I started the month with that, didn't I? Okay. And then you multiply that by the price. So you're lobbying here for no chapter 8. And I'm thinking to myself, why? Chapter 8 is the easier chapter. You sit there and you do what? The other ones, you got to... Work your way through all of that sea of information and those problems and plug it into that formula. That, to me, is a little bit tougher than this. Question back there? Or are you guys just upset because the Raiders lost? That's why I'm upset. Okay. All right. Okay? Okay, let's just go ahead then and let's take a look at um, this question now. And they're giving me what? They're giving me standards up here, aren't they? Okay, and they're asking me for the labor efficiency variance. Labor efficiency variance is going to be what? Standard rate times the standard hours minus the actual hours. Good. Okay, standard rate they tell me up here is $15. Okay, they tell me... They tell me that what the stand the uh, actual hours are what? Hello, 110. Okay, and then they tell me that what they sold a hundred units, and so they sold a hundred, and they are supposed to spend how much time per hunt per unit? One hour. So that's times one equals 100, right? 
So I've got $15 times a negative 10 gives me what? Negative 150. Now, they didn't ask me if it was favorable or unfavorable, but they did say what is the variance, and 150 is the only thing that's correct there, right? Okay. Uh-huh. Guys, I don't know how many times I have to say in this class that I have no patience for talking while your classmate, your colleague, is asking a question you might learn something from. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, they say um, last month the company produced 100 units of its product using 110 direct labor hours at... $16 per hour. So we need to realize that that's the actual, right? Okay. okay. And the fact that they put standard and standard up here is also helping you along to that conclusion, right? Okay. Okay, good. Come over and let's take a look at the next one. A company uses standard costing. And um, okay, and uh, they have their production based on 200,000 units of output. Each unit requires two standard hours. And again, I keep violating my own rule. What am I looking for here? I keep tying myself into the problem, and it's always harder if you're lost in reading the problem rather than knowing what they're looking for. Okay, so what happens? Unfavorable overhead. I mean, uh, what is the amount? Okay, they even tell me it's unfavorable, but we're looking for what? Variable overhead efficiency variance. Overhead efficiency variance is going to be standard rate, and it's going to be actual, and this is hours here, minus the, eh, why do I have to keep doing that? It's going to be what? Standard hours minus the actual hours. Okay, good. All right, so now I come up here and I say, well, do I know what my standard rate is? And they give me, and remember, we only do the variable, right? For the variance, so they tell me that it's 0.75. So I'm going to write this over here since this thing's going to caught, drive me nuts flipping around here. Okay, so we got 0.75, and then we have our actual hours that they use, which is going to be what? 425,000? Actual hours. How do I know that's actual hours? Because it says actual hours, 425,000. And then I'm going to sit there and do what? They produced how many units? 198,000. And it's supposed to take them how long per, per unit? It's supposed to take them two hours per unit. Okay, so it should have taken them to produce 198,000. What's that, 396,000 or something stupid like that? 396,000, but it actually took them 425,000, right? And so that's a difference of what? Negative uh, 29,000 times what? Times 0.75, negative 29,000 times 0.75 is negative 21,750. And they already told me that that's unfavorable. Right? Okay. Okay, good. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the next one. Uh huh. How many units did they produce? So how, on a standard basis, how long should it have taken them? I don't know. I thought you were using 200,000 because that was just 
No, because they didn't produce 200,000. That was the whole point of why we, why we had that flexible budget where we didn't just use what we had actually said that we were going to use for the period. We went ahead and we used what we actually came out with. Remember, Larry actually mowed 550 lawns versus 500. We didn't use the 500. We used the 550. It would be nonsense to sit there and say, I mean, what if the, what if the budget was $10 million and they only reproduced re 198000 I mean, you'd be coming up with a nonsensical number, right? Question? Okay. Okay, good. Come over and let's take a look at this one. Okay. And this one was the one that there was a typo on. They were supposed to say what? KG here? Okay. And so what happens? We're looking for the direct materials price variance okay and so we know it's going to be actual quantity what purchased and then it's going to be standard price minus the actual price good do we know what the standard price was and remember guys uh, when a few of you I came over and um, and talked to you because you're having trouble with this and you were all tied up in this unit thing when we're talking about materials it's materials right not the whole unit it's what goes into the unit to make the unit that we're talking about like that fiber fill in the original examples where we went through on this right okay and so what's happening we're sitting there and we have the actual quantity purchased and used was what 150,000, right? Okay. The standard price per item was what? $2. The actual price was what? Well, what they paid, 322,500 divided by what? The amount that they purchased here, 150,000, right? Use that number twice in the calculations. What do we get? 2.15? Okay, so we get 2.15, 150,000 times a what? Negative 0.15 is going to give me now what? 22,500 unfavorable? Where's that? 22,500 unfavorable? Okay. Okay, good. Let's go to one of your favorite ones. Let's do this one. Okay. And they want to know what the budget of production units for August are, right? If I want to produce, uh, if I want 5,700 uh, 5, units for August, how many units do I have to have in August? How many units do I have to start out with in August? 5,700. I know I got to produce those, right? But they don't want to end up with zero at the end of that month. They have to want to have some left over. They want what? 25% of the next month. So five, five, six, zero. Oh. And I was talking to a student the other day who couldn't tell me what month was the next month after August. Okay, and the reason he couldn't tell me that is because he got himself all tangled up. He's sitting there, oh, 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 I don't know. I said, what's the month that follows August? He said, oh, 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 how am I supposed to know that? Okay, so don't get yourself all tangled up in this that you can't even remember what month follows August. Okay, so it's what? 5560 times how much? Times 25% times 0.25, right? One eight three ten, you say? One three nine zero. Okay, one three nine zero. I want to have those left over, don't I? So the fifty seven hundred times the one three nine zero is going to give me a total needs of seventy ninety, isn't it? That's my total needs, right? I got to have 5,700, I want to have some left over, but 
I would have started the month of, what month are we in? The month of August with what I needed for August, right? Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to take the August number, 5,700, times what? 0.25. I would have started that month with that, right? So 5,700 times 0 0.25 is what, 1425? So I take that 1425 off because I would have started the month with those, so I don't need to produce those. And so it's 5665. Right? Now, what is it about Chapter 8 you're not liking? Which ones? The labor ones are even easier. These are the material ones. Labor ones are even easier. But let's see. And show me which ones you don't like. I'll see if they ring to be unfair. And I won't put ones like that on there. But I don't think so. I think these are pretty straightforward once you put your time, put, put your reps in with them. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at, uh, what, number eight here now? Okay. And now number eight to me was the one that uh, maybe gave you a little bit of trouble, okay? Because uh, they start talking about these sporting boots, right? And they say that you need two kilograms per boot, okay? And so, or two per, uh, excuse me, per pair, okay? So you're going to have to multiply everything by what? Two to be able to get this answer. So that one's a little bit tricky in that you take the 45,000, times how many kilograms? Two kilograms means I'm going to need at least 90,000 kilograms, right? Okay. And then they tell me that they want 20% of what they need for the next month, right? Okay. So the, I mean, excuse me, here we're in the next quarter. So they're going to produce six, uh, 30,000 pairs in the second quarter, right? So it's going to be 30,000 pairs in the second quarter times how many kilograms per? Times 2 kilograms per. So that's, what, 60,000. But they only want to have, what, 20% of that next month's on hand, right? So they really actually only need, what, 12,000 to have that on hand because they're going to produce 45,000 boots. So they need 90,000 pounds of this material, whatever it is, but they don't want to end up with zero, so they're going to produce what? A little extra, 12,000 more, right? Or not produce, but have available 12,000 more materials, right? Okay. Then what happens? Well, they would have started the month with an amount, and this was the trick in this question, and maybe I wouldn't put this on here, and that they just give me the beginning inventory. I don't sit here and have to do any calculation for the beginning inventory. They give it to me. And it might be a little unclear that that 18,000 that they're giving me is the total materials. I don't have to multiply that by two. Okay. When I worked this question, I got stuck because I sat there and I wanted to multiply that one by two as well. And no, if they're telling you that's the materials, you don't have to multiply that by two. You just take the 18,000, right? Because they're telling you that's what the materials were. So you take that 18,000 off and that gives me what? 84,000? 84,000 times what? Times $8 per kilogram. So $8 per gives me what? 672,000? Okay. So again, guys, this was the same as the other problems that we did before. The only thing that happened was because it was two kilograms per, you had to multiply by two, didn't you? You had to multiply this by two. You had to multiply this by two after you took the 20%. And you had to bring them up to the total amount of kilograms that you need per the number of boots, 45,000 boots and... Uh, and 30,000 boots because that last number is what screwed everything up. That last number was already multiplied by 2, right? So in order to get the right answer on this, you had to sit there and multiply everything by 2 to get it on an equal level with that ending inventory number that they gave us. That was the only thing that made this question any different than the other ones we looked at like this. Okay. Okay, good. Come over and let's take a look at... This one. 
Okay, and these are the hours that they will need for what? For the amount, I should say, that they're going to pay for labor in August. And how many hours in August? I mean, how many units, I should say, in August? 8,100 units in August. It takes them how much per hour? I mean, per unit? 0.5 hours, half hour per unit, right? So if it's a half hour per unit, we're talking 8,100 times 5, we're talking what? 40, 50? Oh, right? Hello? Okay. And they tell me that they pay how much per hour on these guys? $21 per hour? So 40, 50 times 21 is going to be what? 100 and... 68,000? Oh. Did they ask me just the one month? Oh, I see. I added the two months together. I don't know why I did that. If you added, um, if you added uh, uh, July, I did the same calculation for July. That's where the 100, I guess I went overboard and I did both months together. It's just one month, right? That they asked for. So 40, 50 times 21, you tell me, is what? 80, 85, 050. Right? So that's hard because. No, I'm serious. That is hard because. Huh? In the book, there's a lot more of these things than this. Huh? Okay. Well, yeah, it's always more difficult when you go over it at first, but uh, you start to look at this and what? You're, they're saying 8,100 units, half hour per unit. How much are they paying per hour? I mean, that's pretty, you know. Peanut butter and jelly to me, huh? Yeah, but okay, but the one before, you know, you want to hang on to that, that it's difficult, but at the end of the day, it's the units that they're going to produce, it's the number of units that they want to have available at the end, which usually is a percentage of the next month, minus what they started the month with, which was the percentage that they needed to start the month, which was the percentage of that month's production, times the amount per unit, right? Okay, so let it go. Don't worry. That monster is destroyed. Okay, okay, good. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at this uh, Frick Road paving. It's considering an investment of a curb forming machine, and the machine will cost 180000 The machine is expected to generate net cash flows of 40 per year in each of the 10 years. What is the net present value at 10% of this. So again, when I do these, I put amounts that are going to come out what? Now versus the future. Good. And then I put a present value factor in the middle of them, don't I? Is that how I set them up? Okay. So I have this 180,000 that's coming out what? Coming out now. So I go ahead and I put that 180,000 down. I don't have to. I'm not going to bother us with this, you know, times one. That's ridiculous. 108,000. Then what? Then they tell me that there will be 40,000 cash inflows per year. If it says 40,000 per year, that is an annuity, isn't it? So I have to go to the present value of the annuity table, don't I? Is this the present value of the annuity table? Yes, it is. This is present value of the annuity table. How many years? Ten years. What interest rate? Ten percent. So what's that? Six point one four five. Six point one four five. So I go ahead and I take that forty thousand times this six point one four five, and that equals what? 
245,800, you say? Okay. And so that 180,000 is negative because it's coming out, right? Okay. Then what? Then I'm going to salvage this thing for 30,000 at the end, right? How many times can you sell something? Once. Okay. And so that means that is a one-time payment, isn't it? Okay. So... I have to go to the present value of what? What table? What table? Present value of a dollar table. Is that the right table? Right? Okay. So it's 10%. And it's 10 years. So it's 0.386. Okay. So I take that times point. There it goes. Times what? 0.386. 30,000 times 0.386 is? 10,580? 11,000? 580. Okay, great. Thank you. So 180,000 out, 245,800 on a present value basis in. 11,580 on a present value basis for that salvage value gives me what? 77,380? Question? Okay, let's go ahead and let's take a look. Uh, I'm not going to do this Galindo hauling. We just did this one, right? We just did that one together in the homework. If you want to see how that one's done, just look back at the Chapter um, 13 lecture. Okay, how about this baby frames? Okay. What is the variable overhead efficiency variance? Our variable overhead efficiency variance is going to be my standard rate times my what? Standard hours minus my actual hours. Good. And so my standard rate is what? $2. Standard and budget are synonymous, right? $2. My actual hours are what? 2100 my standard hours are and it's supposed to be 0.1 how many frames did I actually produce I actually produced 19,000 frames right so it's how much that I should have used for what I actually produced right and so I should have used 1900 hours to produce um, 19,000 frames. I used 2,100, so I used too much, didn't I? So I've got a negative $2 times, what's that, negative 200? So that's a what, 400 unfavorable? Yeah. yeah. Did it come back? I don't even want to look. Did it, did it come back? Okay. All right. Okay, good. Let's come over and let's look at this neighbors. And um, we're looking for the payback period, right? Okay. So what is the payback period? Well, I know that I'm going to invest up front. It's going to come back. Okay. So I know that I'm going to invest up front what... Um, 279,000. Great. Thank you. So 279,000 is going to be invested up front and I want to get my net cash flows from this thing, right? Now they give me operating income of 106,000. And so I take that 106,000 of my operating income, but that's not my cash flow because depreciation does not use cash, right? So what do I do with the depreciation? Add it back, 33,000. So that's going to give me 139,000 cash flows on it. I take the 279,000. I divide that by the 139,000 cash flows that are going to come from that. And what does that give me? A payback period of like 2.007 or something stupid like that. 
So it's about two years. Huh? I ignored it. I ignore it for the payback method. Look, if I'm going to have to wait until I salvage this thing to get my money back, then this is not a good investment. Okay, I what I recovered my money well before I am actually getting rid of the equipment. I'm still using the equipment, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm using the equipment generating cash flows. If I got to wait, how many years was it? Eight years until I salvage it, until I finally got back. That's the worst business decision in the history of the earth. Right? Okay. Okay, good. But that's a good question. Okay, because we use salvage value for what? For the net present value method for the internal rate of return. So another weakness really of payback is that it's not really even just ta talking about something really kind of stupid. How long does it take you to, meanwhile, well, what about all the time after that? <laughs> right? So you're really ignoring that as part of the analysis. Okay. Okay, good. So we come over and we take a look at uh, this. Oh, here we go. Everybody's favorite. Okay. All right. So we're making this garlic gravy. Okay. And they're asking us about May. They're asking us about May. And if they're asking me about May, if I want to have 80,000 units to sell in May, do I need to make 80,000 units? Okay, then I better put 80,000 down, right? Right? Then they sit there and they tell me what? They sit there and they tell me that I need to end up with, you need to go, they, um, need to end up with what percent of the next month? Okay, see They need to end up with how much the next month? They want to produce 75,000 that next month, don't they? So do I want to end the month with a little bit left over to give me a head start for the next month? So I take that 75,000 times what? Times the 0 0.1, that's 7,500, isn't it? So that now gives me a total needs of... $87,500. It's, I, there's a word I like to use when it has, starts with an F that it's doing with me right now, okay? All right, so that's what, $87,500? Huh? Right? Okay, good. Then what? But I started the month. This is the only thing that really bothers you about these questions, guys, is that situation of what they start the month with. They start the month with what they need to cover the production, at least 10% of it anyway, for that month, right? You keep wanting to take this month. And it's not. It's the month that we're in that analyzing is what the beginning inventory is in that month, right? Okay, so we take that 80,000 times 0 0.1 is going to be what? 8,000? Okay, and that's coming off, right? Because they would have started the month with that, right? And so when I do the calculations there, I get uh, how many? 79,000 what? 500? So I get 79,500, but how many pounds, how many grams per? Five grams of garlic per, so I got to multiply that by five, don't I? And when I multiply that out, that gives me what? How much? A, 397,000. Right? Okay. Okay, good. Let's look at... Let's look at this one. This one was pretty fun. Okay. This one you needed to read a little more slowly to understand what was going on here. And as I said, these are sort of reading comprehension questions, or all these are. Okay. And I can't get down without, then I'll lose this page. It's month of April, isn't it? They asked for cash in April. 
Okay, how much cash are they going to collect in April? Well, will they collect April's cash sales in April? If I have a cash sale of 40000 in April, then I'm going to get that cash in April, right? Well, I'm going to start with what I know. I got $40,000 cash credit sales in April, right? So I know I'm going to get that cash. Okay. And then I guess I have to scroll down to see what else is going on here with this stupid thing splitting off. And uh, so I've got that 40000 I guess I'll write it here and have to scroll back and forth just to make it fun. And so I've got this 40000 And then they tell me that they'll get 70% of the credit sales will be collected in the month what? Following the month of sale. So I come up and I look at my good March because what month follows March April and I'm evaluating what month God, this is gonna drive me nuts Let's see if I can get more of it on the screen at one time so I'm going to get what the month that follows um, March is what? April, and I'm evaluating what? I'm evaluating April, right? Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to take March's credit sales of 60000 right? I'm going to take March's credit sales of 60000 and I know that I'm going to get what? 70% of that in April or 42000 right? Okay, then what? Then they tell me, going back down to that additional information down there, that um, what? The balance will be collected in the second month following the sale. Well, what's the second month? April is the second month following what month? Following February, right? So I got to sit there and I got to find February. February had how much? February had 50,000 of credit sales. And if we had 50,000 of credit sales in February, you have what? You have March. You have April is the second month following February, isn't it? And they tell us you'll collect the balance. Well, if I collected what? 70% of the... Uh, February sales in March, then that means there's only 30% left for me to collect in April, right? Right? Okay, I collect the cash sales for April and April. I collect 70% of March sales in April, and I collect what? 30% of February sales in April. Hello? You collect 70% in the month after the sale and what? The remaining 30% two months after the sale. February was a sale. March, April, that's two months after the sale, right? Okay. And so I go ahead and I multiply that. What's that, 15000 Okay. And when I add all that up, I get what? 97000 Okay, question? Okay, how many questions are you going to have on the midterm? 30. 30. So basically, you can take what you see there and double it. What you saw there is double of what you're going to get on your test, right? It's going to be like that, double. Starts at 7 o'clock. Thursday, just come here next week. Basically the same time. Okay, guys? All right, have a good evening. We'll see you next time. Can you turn the light on, please? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, that's all right. Let me uh, turn the, uh, the recording off real quick. Okay.